The Garda Ombudsman has received 28 complaints about the behaviour of Gardaí at last Wednesday's student protest. The complaints are understood to include claims that Gardaí used excessive force on peaceful demonstrators. I was at, I was at the uh, Adolescent House today, the kind of protest came up there. There was a very small section that threw wigs and things like that, a very small section. I don't think it done the, uh, the, um, the intent of the protest. Uh, any justice because it allowed the media to focus on that rather than focus on the issues. And uh, my other students, are, I, I, I love radicalism in, in society, and students were always to the forefront of radicalizing, uh, trying to radicalize the system but, uh, in, in, in bringing about a situation where real issues uh, are forced onto the, onto the floor of the political arena. And I think the uh, the protest was very well, very well done, a very small few, i say maybe 10 people, 12 people were involved in what happened and unfortunately the media sat in the focus on that, which didn't do the do justice to the intent of what the, the protest was all about. Yeah, well I think first of all you have to acknowledge and encourage the fact that students who feel aggrieved by various proposals get out on the streets and make their voices heard. I think that's very healthy, it's good for democracy and it's a very positive thing. Now, on the other hand, I know that apparently there were some individuals who, who um, in a way, hijacked the protest for their own, um, for, for, for their own wants and for their own agenda. But as someone who's protested before, as a student and someone who's been out in the streets with placards, I, I mean, I have huge empathy with, with, with students. Well, already we've seen cuts um, this year, you know, the, the, the hiking registration fee at the 500 euro, you know, um, the change from um, the proximities for the grants for, for mature students, again, uh, sorry to everyone. The students can't handle any more of it, you know. Um, we're already seeing dropouts. Um, these, these cuts are due to come in at the start of the next academic year for all students. Um, the usual way cuts are being brought in is that uh, for first year students, you know, students that aren't essentially in the system, you know, but this is going to affect all students, you know, so um, it'll hurt them, you know, and, and that's what we're doing with ourselves locally and, and with USI is to, to try and combat this and, and trying to get Rory Quinn to, to see the light as such, you know, that, that swiping the feet under, under students is no way forward, you know. We're in total opposition to it. Okay, we feel it's it's um, it's going to prevent people from continuing their studies. It's going to prevent other people from coming to college. So, our stance on it is we want the SUI, the Students Union of Ireland, to rethink their policies and approach to their campaign against fees. It's proven, has been proven, in the last 12 years plus that it, it's not working, okay? These token marches to Dublin once a year are, are not working. Um, it's, you know, it, it went from 150 pounds to 2,000 euros. It's not working. So our, our stance is, let's sit down together. We've asked the student union to sit with us and we, we discuss it and we want more student involvement in all issues regarding two students. Um, we ran a campaign here last year, we, we asked people did they want to be, we asked students did they want to be involved in the in issues that are pertaining to them and they said yes. 450 of them signed a petition in about seven hours. Um, we didn't advertise it, we just put up a table outside with permission from um, the college upstairs and we got 450 signatures. People want to do something, we, you know, we need to do something together as a student union. to uh, clearly explain the decisions which we've taken today uh, and what they mean for our people. 
Above all, I want to assure the Irish people that we have a better future before us and that we continue to act together in the national interest now. I can confirm that the government has today decided that Ireland apply uh, for financial assistance uh, to the European Union. The request of the government was transmitted to the European authorities this evening. The European authorities have agreed to our request. Well, I think it's universally acknowledged that there's a problem in how we finance higher education in Ireland at the moment. It's a massive drain on state resources which, as everybody knows, are very stretched at present. So we need to try to establish a method where we can finance, finance the, the higher education sector to ensure the provision of quality courses. I, I think it, we are in a, in a global recession at the moment. Uh, unprecedented you know we haven't seen anything like this before you know um, on this scale anyway um, and uh, graduate unemployment is a worry you know for for students even that are in in the system now in the education system and people that will be coming out after it you know and, and we are working with USI and even locally um, to make sure that that graduate unemployment is looked at you know I think it's a bit of a joke to be honest, uh, the students are the people who are going to help this country out of the mess it's in, in the, at the moment and I know people who have to immigrate because they can't afford college and can't get jobs. Yeah, definitely. There's um, Ireland, for my course anyway, it's, uh, marketing is small anyway and the jobs are very selected. So definitely for it to get jobs in area and big, large corporations we'd have to leave the country. Hopefully I'll try and stay in the country if I can, if I can get a job with i say it's looking doubtful, probably head to America or Australia where the jobs is in our sector. It, it, it's, it's really, we're in the worst economic downturn in years and the only way I feel that we can come out of it is through education and by the government getting uh, people back into the workforce and by the government getting people into high well paid jobs again which the government will take in more revenue in taxes and in turn they will make more money and help us to get it out of the, the recession that we're in and as well the IMF bailout deal that we can pay it off quicker putting up registration fees, you're putting pressure on families, you're putting pressure on people already that are in pressure to pay mortgages and you're going to take a certain sector out of the workforce and put them into low paid jobs which aren't going to be of any benefit to the government because they're not going to take in revenue. I, I have to say that at this point in time that I'm involved in the GA in my local pub. My local, my local, my local. So many young people are leaving and I'd be travelling to different clubs every week and they come to us everywhere you go, young people go and Small villages, scores of young people. Well, that's it, you know, and that, that was one of our big campaigns this year was um, the brain drain. You know, um, we spend all, all, all our money um, educating the students. Um, they come out after the degree and there's no jobs, you know. We, we've tried to tackle graduate unemployment on a, on a big scale this year, you know. What's the, the point of going to college if there's no jobs for it at the end of it, you know? It is a massive problem to you face in the country. The fact that our, our youngest and brightest generation are leaving is, has the potential to cause a massive problem for, for the country. Well, we are at the moment, uh, we have politically have bailed out bankers' private debts and made them part of the sovereign debt, which is inhibiting uh, many aspects uh, of many, many issues in our society. We're borrowing money from the IMF and we're borrowing money from the European Central Bank. And I'm not against um, borrowing for capital spending. And capital spending is education. 
because it's an investment for the future, the very same as the infrastructure is an investment for the future, so is education. So by reforming the grant system and making the grant, the grant system uh, relevant to the everyday needs uh, of, of society now, uh, I think that is the way that you can help to in, try and ensure as best you can that the gifts that young people have, and that's why young people have, will be realised. They, they have to look at other options, you know, cuts isn't the way forward, no way. You know, and, and access to it, their level of education has to be kept. What we need to do is I think there needs to be collective agreement between the, all of the players in, in the higher education sector about how we put a, a fair system in place that will finance the higher education sector as best as possible. I don't think it will ever be self-financing. The state will have to pay some amount, but at the moment it, it's quite clear that it's, the state is paying too much for the higher education sector and that needs to change but we need to ensure a system though as well that doesn't close doors in people's faces at a time where we actually need to be opening doors to, to education for people if we have any hope of recovering from the economic mess that we're in. I've had two people who stopped taking notes in their lectures because they're not coming back next year, they can't afford it. I had a mother ring me who has two children, one daughter here in this institute and another in Limerick and herself and her husband had to make a decision on which one was going to lose out on their, on their um, academic career. Now, that's, we want that stopped. That's, that can't happen, it can't be allowed to happen. We need to sit down and we need to rethink and, and, and talk and see what we can do to, to prevent stories like this, these, these stories from happening. It's simple.